around the world, locally, with family and friends. And to those viewing for the first time, the House of Destiny International Ministries presents Dr. Larry Manley with today's message designed to create a spiritually vibrant connection between our listeners and God. We hope you will enjoy this presentation and above all, we pray you will be blessed. Sort of like a, a GPS, you know, like the, the, the GPS is the spirit of God. And when we listen to the GPS, we pretty well get to our destination most of the time. As long as it's being updated and God is always updated. Amen. Amen. Talking about detours today. There are two parents that produces a child that causes big detours in our life. One of the parents is fear. The other parent is doubt. And when those two parents copulate, they bring birth to a child called immobility. It means you're stuck. Case in point. You're looking at a job you've never done before. It pays more money. Way out of anything that you ever thought. You got a dream, but you don't know how to do it. And then fear and doubt steps in. Did that ever happen to you? And then you back off it, don't you? Because fear and doubt produces immobilization. You become like Lot's wife, a pillar of salt. You see, we're the salt of the earth, right? We're mobile. But because she took a detour, she took a detour. She looked back. And she became immobilized. She wasn't able to move. Instead of being the salt of the earth, she became a pillar of salt, immobilized. She couldn't move no further. And God said, go to the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's that higher place, whether it's on a spiritual or a physical level. That's that higher place God wants us to go. But... We want to settle for a little place called Zor. Y'all remember Lot? God said, go to the mountain, get up out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and go to the mountain. They said, no, let us go over here to this little place called Zor. Zor means small, little place, because of doubt. And because of that detour, look what happened. Two incestuous nations came from Lot, Moab and Ammon. Or ben which is the father of the Ammonites. Amen? Amen? That's what took place because of the detour. Let's start at the beginning where the detour really began. And <coughs> it's the biggest detour <coughs> that man has ever made. Go to me to, with me to Genesis 3 verse 6. Put Genesis 3 verse 6 up for me. And when the woman, that's the inner spiritual self of an individual. We're not talking about a physical woman here. We're talking about something that's inside of us that's supposed to be the GPS. The inner spiritual self of an individual because the woman came out of Man, she's made out of pure stock. And when the woman saw that the tree mm -hmm, was good for food, hmm, that's the lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, that's the lust of the eyes. 
and a tree to be desired to make one wise. That's the pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Mm -hmm. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Three things called the major detour here. The first thing was the lust of the flesh. She saw that it was good food. Mm -hmm. Then the lust of the eyes, she saw that it was pleasant. Sin seems pleasant for a season, short season. And then there has to be a payoff, right? Wages of sin is death. And then there's the pride of life. It was there to make one wise. Be not wise in thine own eyes, the Bible tells us. So there she is, and there he is, and they go on this major detour. And we've been trying to get back on track ever since then. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's a major detour that took mankind away from God's true intentions for him. When he fell in the sin. Amen? Amen. Sin is a powerful thing. Don't fool yourselves. It's very powerful. So here's Adam and Eve. And they go through this thing called getting kicked out of the garden. That means that their soul wasn't in the delight of God anymore. Amen. Amen. But now it knew good from evil. And because the knowledge of good and evil from that tree brought about a devastating occurrence. And ever since then, however long, The man that was created in the image and the likeness of God, however long he's been here on this earth, we've been trying to get back to where God would have us to be. Am I right about it? Major detour. And all we're going to do today is just give some examples. Of these detours. Please cut those phones off. I don't want to get into that this morning. I'm trying to deliver this word. Genesis 16 verses 2. Genesis 16 verses 2. (coughs) And Sarah... Said unto Abraham, watch then. Behold now, the Lord have restrained me from bearing. They were promised to have a child. And I pray thee, go in unto my maid. You see what happened here? Detour. Go in unto my maid. See, that's a detour. detour. Detours come from the decisions that we make. Amen. It causes us to take a left turn when we should be taking a right. GPS say take a right turn, but we say, well, I know a shorter way. I'm going to go this way. And now we wind up going round and round and round in circles. We've all been there, right? It may be that I may obtain children by her. See, I want to help God out. <laughs> We're going to help you, God, since you gave us this promise. We're going to help you. And Abram, look at old Abram. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Well, his wife just gave him permission to go in on the woman, right? And he's a man, right? And he's going to go. So don't come up in there like, oh God, you know, I don't want to hear it. 
The wife done told you you can go, you gonna go. That's a detour. Sarah told him to. According to the scripture, right? He didn't tell himself to. She put it in detour. Adam did. She put it in his head to eat what he shouldn't have eaten of. And that's a spiritual thing. That ain't got nothing to do with a fleshly woman. That spirit can work in anybody. Just like the Jezebel spirit, it can work in anybody. Man, child, female, it don't make no difference. So we're not picking on women up in there, we're picking on mankind. That's what we're doing. We're pointing out the detours that man makes in life. Amen? So Sarah says, go in. Let's help God out. That was what was in her mind. She didn't know she was making a detour. She thought she, okay, we're going to help God since it's been such a long time. We're going to help him. How many of us have tried to help God usher in his plan? Amen. Mm-hmm. And caused a detour, Right? One of my biggest concerns when it comes to this church is making sure that I stay on post to try to land this plane on Heaven's Ass Strip. That's my biggest challenge. And I go through hell with that challenge. Because if you knock the pilot out, Plane gonna go down. Plane ain't go, the plane gonna go down. If you knock the pilot out, you better hear me. Because the pilot knows how to fly the plane. You don't. You're a passenger on the plane. It's like Ray Charles saying, let me drive. Or Stevie one. Let me drive. Y'all catching my drill? Mm-hmm. So here we are in the detours of life. We make many of them. And like I said, I'm just going to call out some examples today because they're all in the Bible. We've already seen where Adam and Eve took a detour, right? We've already seen where Abraham took a detour, right? Caused another nation to be at odds with the nation that God had intended. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Exodus 12, verse 30 and 32. Not going to be with you long. Exodus 12, verses 30. And 32. Tell me when you get there. <clears throat> and Pharaoh rose up in the night. He and all his servants. And all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry. In Egypt, because all the firstborn died of the Egyptian. And there was not a house where there was not one dead. Amen? And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. See, they were in a, the Egyptians were in a place of adversity. Firstborn, all those plagues had been hidden. And he said, rise up. And get you forth from among my people. Both you and the children of Israel. And go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds. mm -hmm, As ye have said. And be gone. 
and bless me also. <laughs> you hear Pharaoh? Pharaoh is saying, y'all can go. But while you're going and you're taking all your stuff, make sure you bless me. The one that had them in bondage. That's like the devil saying, bless me. Amen? Amen. Same thing. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that it was only three days journey from Egypt to Mount Sinai. Three days. From Mount Sinai to the borders of Kadesh Barnea, the borders of Canaan, was only 11 and a half days. A total of 13 and a half days from the time they left Egypt. To the time they could have got to the land of Canaan was only 13 and a half days total. Three days from Egypt to Mount Sinai, 11 and a half days from Mount Sinai to the land of Canaan. Took them 40 years. Took them 40 years to get there. And the only ones got there, the original was two people. Joshua and Caleb, which represents the Jew and the Gentile. Because Caleb wasn't a real Jew. His daddy was a Canaanite. So he was showing back then that the Jew and the Gentile would get in through faith. Amen? Amen. But watch this detour. When they got to the borders of Canaan, they saw giants, right? Remember I told you about doubt and fear will produce immobilization? It'll keep you from going forward. What did they do? We can't take them. We look like grasshoppers in their sight. See, however you see yourself is how others going to see you too. So, because of fear that they were giants, because of doubt that they couldn't take them, They forgot all about God and they took a detour. They came back with a bad report. And that bad report cost them from a 13 and a half day journey to get to where God was trying to take them. Took them 40 years. And all the original except two died in the wilderness because of that detour. Only the 20 year olds and below the new breed of Israel went in. Amen? Amen. Amen. Only Joshua and Caleb of the old crew went in because of, somebody say detour. detour. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we do, we make them all the time, right? Because of the decisions that we make. And see, once the mind is conditioned to do certain things, how many of y'all know it's hard to break those habits? And this is why God told us from the beginning, don't mess with that. This is why Paul said, touch not, taste not, handle not, because those that do perish at the usage thereof. That's why they say all of that stuff. But this stuff, it starts to bring light to our soul. Many times after we've already screwed up. Now we're in it. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Detours. I know all about detours. Joshua, the fifth chapter, verses six through nine. Joshua, sixth chapter. Verses 6 through 9. 
It says, And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest, said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord. It said to the people, Pass on to pass the city, and let him that is on pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed before the Lord and blew the trumpet. And the ark of the covenant followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew the trumpet and they rewarded, re-rewarded, came after the ark. The priests going on and they were blowing the trumpet. See, here... There are no detours. They're doing what God has spoke for them to do. Amen? When we do what God has spoken to us to do, the way he's spoken to us to do it, there are no detours involved. It's afterwards, when we don't do it, that we make these detours. Remember, these detours that we make come by our decisions that we made. And I'm going to tell you right now. It costs to be the boss. Of your own sin. I'm going to say it again. It costs. To be the boss. Of your own sin. Because. You, you and me too. We're paying ourselves. Death. That's the payment. Jonah. Let's look at Jonah. Jonah, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3. Put that up, please. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittah, saying, next verse, Arise, that means get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. Next verse. But Jonah Mm -hmm. rose up to flee unto Tarshish, he made a decision. He rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. That's right, sis, there's a detour. And he went, look what he did. When we, see, when we go and we take detours, look what we find ourselves. And went where? Down. Down. To jump. Now watch this. And he found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof. And he went where? Down. Went down some more, didn't he? See, that's what sin to do. That's what these detours would do. And he went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. You see, sin causes us to go away from the presence of the Lord. And we are so conditioned in it until it causes malfunctions in our life. And there's not a man, a woman, or a child anywhere who doesn't take detours. We make bad decisions sometimes that causes us to take a detour from the presence of the almighty living God. I know I'm speaking the truth and I'm speaking it from experience. I know what I'm talking about a few. 
I've always said if I had to go through the jungles, I was in Nam, the Vietnam era. I don't want to go through no book learner. I want to go through a sergeant that's done been through the jungle. That's a man of experience. I don't want to, I don't want no lieutenant or no ensign or none of that. I want the real deal. I want the, the petty officers, the ones that's done been through the jungle to lead me. Cause I got a better chance of getting out alive. Amen. It's ironic. Preacher was saying this morning, he was right. Moses was given all kind of education in Egypt. And then he had to flee Egypt and go out in the desert for 40 years. Till he was 80 years old because he left Egypt at 40. Came back at 80. Moses didn't know God was conditioning him. See, sometimes God takes us on a detour. See, all things work for the good of those that love the Lord. Who's been called in accordance to his purpose. See Moses was called way before he was called. So God sits him up. And he takes a detour. And he kills a man. But what appeared to be a detour. God used for his glory. Because during the whole time. Out there in that desert. For 40 years. 40 years. Long time. But he was conditioning Moses. Because the whole time Moses was there, Moses was tending to sheep. And for 40 years, God taught Moses every aspect of that desert. Wonder why. 